Tony's just out in the hallway. He'll right. be right back in. If it's all right with you guys, I'm just going to start now. It's already five minutes past seven. If I could have a motion of the Board of Selectmen. So moved to accept the agenda. Right. Can I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Like I said, Tony's just out in the hallway talking to the town administrator, but I figured we'd get started. Are there any walk-ins tonight? Gender item number two. Not seeing any. Okay. Gender item number three is to set the date for the special town meeting. It's just changed a little bit, but I think it's um, safe to say that we could move forward with the 4th of November. Okay, do you want a motion? Please. All right, I'll move that the Board of Selectmen vote to set the special town meeting date as Monday, November 4th, 2013. Second. I have a motion and a second for the special town meeting. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 We don't have to. John. Kim, we don't have to put the date or the time, do we? We just put the date. It's Usually six. it's seven. Always seven, seven, o'clock. seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All right, yeah. just so Without people know. Quarrel. Kim, just one question. If it goes a second night, did the moderator say it was going to be the sixth? Correct. It would be Wednesday night the sixth. Okay. Tricia, what do you think? Will it go second night? God, I hope not. <laughs> we have at least a dozen right now, but um, not until it gets over, like, 25 but I, I it's a special town meeting so there's nothing you know hugely um, substantive in terms of the budget yeah good okay all right gender item number four is a vote a discussion of a vote uh, the bond anticipation is Pam here thank you Pam how are you how are you good okay so um we sold a note on September 11th, 2013. What it basically was, was at the fiscal year end, 13, we bought, uh, had a small 90-day note of 536000 And uh, we were hoping to use that 536000 and re, uh, refinance some old notes, do some new borrowing. Interest rates, long-term interest rates, of course, skyrocketed. It wasn't feasible to do that right now to pull those old bonds back and refinance them. So what I did is just rolled <coughs> the 536000 from a 90-day note to a year. So um, it went out to bid. The winning bid was Eastern Bank at a rate of 0.6% interest. So great note. We, didn't, uh, we went through the Bureau of Accounts, so I didn't have to get a legal opinion. We saved the town a lot of money that way. So. Excellent. By doing what you did on your own. Correct. Right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Pam. You're welcome. Right. My pleasure. Thanks. Any Pam. questions? If not, no. Just that next year we'll have to go back to it again, though, right? And yes. Um, and well, try well, to roll into something long term that's going to be more beneficial than what they're. Correct. And I'm always watching those two old notes too. So those two old bonds. Hopefully, you know, uh, interest rates will cooperate and we'll be able to do something about it. Okay. Now on this note, if it, can you get out of it before I the can. year's up? Yeah, no, no penalties, no anything. Right. You can pay it off tomorrow if we want. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Jump. Motion: Move the board of selectmen vote to execute bond anticipation notes for the recommendation of the treasurer collector. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Pam. <coughs> Gender item number five is to uh, interview and vote for the finance director, town accountant position. This is. Uh, an exciting night. Um, I, I went across the hall and met Nancy earlier. I said hello, and uh, uh, Nancy, if you don't mind coming up. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me, gentlemen. Thank you very much. If you wouldn't mind, just I read your resume over. If you wouldn't mind, just saying a couple of things, it'd be Certainly. wonderful. And I'll open it up to the board, open it up to the audience, and. Yeah, and just so people know out there that this is one of the few hires that we actually do. We. Hired the town administrator and um, Five. The finance Treasure director, collector. And the treasurer collector, yeah. so. legal counsel, veterans yeah. account, uh, veterans affairs, and also a town administrator. So I feel suitable. You're special. one of our five. <laughs> there you go. Those all yours. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Nancy Holt, as you already know. I'm currently the treasurer collector for the town of Marshfield and have been so for the last 13 years. Uh, prior to that, I was with the town of Hingham in two different capacities for five years. So my municipal finance career extends over 18 years, sad to say. Um, before that, I was in the private sector. Um, I do have an MBA, and I have a graduate certificate in 
uh, state and local government leadership from Suffolk University. I am very much interested in the position for the challenges that it brings. As I said, I am a serving treasurer collector. I'm not a serving town accountant. Um, I have operated in the capacity of a finance director. Marshall does not have such a position, um, meaning that I actually do the town-wide budget preparation, um, capital budget, attend all the advisory board meetings, all the capital budget committees uh, meetings, and prepare the estimates for what a project's going to cost, the impact on the homeowner, those types of things are all things that I've been doing now for eight or nine years in Marshfield. Um, also, I am a DOR certified assessor. I'm a mass certified public procurement official. I'm a certified treasurer. I'm a certified collector. And I would be a certified governmental accountant if they allowed people like me to become certified governmental accountants. They're not, you're not allowed to become one unless you are a sitting town accountant and a member of that association. And then they'll let you actually go to their school and attend their um, certification and attempt to pass their exams. I say attempt because not everyone does. That would be my goal to pass them in March. There are two exams, practical and illegal. But um, up to this point, everything that I could become certified in regarding municipal finance, I have done so and have sought all that additional education. So I have surrounded um, this particular position, have done parts of this particular position, and helped out in the town accountant's office. I actually did work in the town accountant's office in Hingham for a couple of years uh, before moving on to the treasurer collector's office there. So I feel I'm very well prepared for the position, and I welcome any comments or questions you have for me. Open it up to the board. Just jump out if anyone has any questions or comments for Nancy. No, I've, I've read your resume and I've heard a lot of good things, so I, I feel pretty comfortable. Thank you so much. Well, well, one of the two of the things that really made this job more interesting. I mean, obviously, you're right across right across <coughs> Hall and, and Marshfield. You've been there for a while. Um, are some of the challenges here? You know, what intrigued you to this position? Um, two main and items that intrigued me. One, career progression. I would become a finance director, a position that doesn't exist in Marshfield by title. Um, though I may not appear it, I'm actually younger than you would than I appear, and I still have a good 20 years left in my career, and it would be nice to make my career go a little bit farther forward. Um, also the challenge of the town accountant's position, I have not been a sitting town accountant, nor have I actually um, been allowed to attend their school or try to get certified in that profession and it interests me greatly to com finish completing my municipal finance uh, education and background. Good. John, any questions or comments? <coughs> no, I just thought, uh, how start? soon can you start? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, obviously it's a very s important position for our town as you very well know and um, um, we have a lot of good people who work here and so uh, I think the person who we are selecting, and, and you're certainly uh, highly qualified and, and come to the top of the list, um, the people here are, are, are a joy to work with. So um, you know, I, I think um, for the person, in this case, your situation, it'll be a very enjoyable job. So. Thank you. I just want to say I, you know, I welcome you. Uh, I talk and meeting with um, through the FEMA uh, issues uh, with the Marshfield selectmen and town manager. I was afraid to say anything because I didn't know what what was what was said. Uh, they're gonna sounds like they're gonna miss a, a valuable person. So I look forward to working with you. Um, Thank you. Plus, I think the other thing is you've come. Um, I don't want to say overqualified, but you've come and you 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 complement a lot of areas. So um, you, you bring a great depth of of uh, knowledge and experience that um, the position it's 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 great for our town. Yeah. Thank you. Motion. The only, yeah, the only thing I'd add is you come highly recommended. We've spoken to a number of people who have worked with you either directly or indirectly, and it's a vital part of our operation. You know, that It's been a big void for the last however many months it's been. Um, so we're looking forward to getting a real competent person in there to help make Trisha's job easier and, and you know, get the whole budget process go a lot smoother. So Make our job easier, too. Yeah. <laughs> Something. I don't know how the vote's going to turn out, but congratulations if you get it. Thank you. I'll make a motion. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to appoint Nancy Holt as the Finance Director Town Accountant for the Town of Situate, effective 10-21-13 through 10-20-16 upon execution of a contract. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Congratulations. It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you very much, gentlemen. Great. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you. <coughs> oh, thank you. Very nice to meet you. Nancy, thank you. I am going to jump over item number skip, five. Yeah. Go to oh, six. I'm sorry, six. Skip over six because Jim Cantwell had asked if I just can hold on till he arrives. Um, the coalition had asked if they could come on uh, the, the agenda this evening, and Jim said he'd be willing to come in this evening. Some of us met with Jim earlier today, and he's going to be taken off to Marsh, uh, to Washington tomorrow. So as soon as he arrives, maybe we'll jump back to six. If that's all right with everyone else. Perfect. Great. Number seven is a discussion and a vote for the months of October and November of this year for some one-day licenses at a Maritime Center. Mr. Chairman, it actually is just October. There was an oh. error on the uh, All right. Okay. But just the month of October then. Great. And we've been doing this every month. Um, so move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant one day wine and malt beverage licenses to pre approved caterers for October event as listed at the Situate Maritime Center, Edward Foster Road, and an additional five license to be held for events not yet scheduled. All caterers must present certificates of insurance for liquor service prior to the event date. I'll second that. Motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the caterers, Kim, it looks like a lot of them are the same name, so that's, that hasn't been an issue. If, it, and it's not to say that a, a new one couldn't come in. Is that correct? As long as they meet the criteria. Right. Okay, good. good. All right, so we motion in a second. Did we vote it? Yes, we yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Unanimous. Yep. All right. Unanimous. Fabulous. Agenda Thank item you. number eight. <coughs> the report from the, did I do that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number eight. Moving the report right along. from the town administrator the week, in the week ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the item on the agenda, the drug-free communities grant, um, I told them to come in around quarter of eight. So if we could um, postpone okay. that item, um, not knowing that item number six would be postponed a little because um, we do want to have the folks directly involved in that. But I do have a few other items that I can share. Um, thank you for the appointment of the finance director slash town accountant. Um, that position has been vacant for a few months and as we head into the budget process and town meeting, um, it's certainly one that, um, as one of you noted, can't happen soon enough. Um, like any organization, this turnover um, comes in peaks and valleys and we're in a real peak right now. As you know, we swore in the chief of police yesterday and he took uh, Chief Stewart the second took over, um, or the third, I guess, um, his great-grandfather was chief, um, took over yesterday in a nice ceremony. Um, I th don't think we've talked at a meeting publicly that Al Bangert, who has just done, I think, no short of a miraculous job as our DPW superintendent, is retiring December 1st. And um, Al's on vacation this week, but um, I certainly hope we have an opportunity to recognize um, the tremendous progress and movement forward he has done in every aspect of public works. Um, truly one of the most talented people I've ever worked in, with during my career. Um, he has agreed to stay on um, sort of on a short-term basis after he retires um, to oversee the solar and wind array issues and also I think um, will be sort of a a project manager liaison for us um, relative to the public facilities master planning. But um, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to do that more. We're advertising for that position right now. Similarly, I think folks saw on the Mariner last week that our Council on Aging Director Florence Choate is retiring December 15th. So we are also advertising for that position as well. So um, in the four years that I've been here, um, I think we've had, this will probably make a dozen new department heads um, that have retired. Um, um, Mary, as you know, went to Cohasset, Meg went to Carver, so some folks recruit us, we recruit others, um, but just a time changing. Whenever we lose personnel, there's a, a little loss of organizational history, but we are also, at, it's an opportunity to look the way we operate and change things up if we want to before we replace that position. So I <coughs> just wanted to give you a heads up on that. <coughs> I did want to spend a minute to recrep briefly um, in public session um, the board's retreat that we had September 
7th. Um, as you know, the board has an annual retreat each year to discuss uh, its goals for the coming year, its budget cycle. We have an executive session to discuss contracts. Uh, as you know, all the union contracts, with the exception of DPW, are being bargained now. So that's clearly an in implication for FY15. We did put some money in the budget for FY14. Um, it should be enough, but I'm not sure yet um, as we look at the special town meeting. Um, I think it was really helpful for the board to set some priorities around the master plan and also on pending town issues. You've gotten a lot of inquiries around those issues. And um, the purpose of the retreat is to um, have me get feedback from you so I can design the budget for FY15, recognizing what those priorities are. Um, you may want to chat a little bit more about it, but then the board's very clear consensus was to address the brown water issue immediately, followed by the challenges we face with the gate school in terms of educating our children. And then if indeed a new school is approved by the MSBA, what happens to the gate school once it empties out after the new school is built. And that's a priority for the board as far as making sure that that building doesn't wither away and is reprogrammed <coughs> for a town hall and a senior center with a senior center being programmed as soon as possible once it becomes available. So um, again, that kind of guidance was very helpful to me. Um, and those are just your top three, and the very close fourth that we'll continue to have in play is foreshore protection. So um, we'll be working on those goals. As far as the master plan goes, that doesn't mean the other issues fall away. We are out to bid right now to hire a consultant to do schematic design for a public safety building. They're looking at three potential sites to place that building on. Um, one of the goals of our new chief of police is to really um, take on that role and be the leader and the coordinator along with the fire chief um, in, in just getting as much information as we can on the plan and seeing um, what is needed in terms of existing in the existing facility for the next few years and what um, a new facility is going to look like. So I just um, wanted to uh, share that with the board in terms of the week ahead. And, and if you have any other questions or want to add anything. I mean, the only thing I'd add about our meeting is we, we discussed this at um, meetings when we were talking about the library, that it's important for the board at the special town meeting to present all of the pending issues that are coming before the town before we start voting on any of them individually. So not that one project good or one project's bad, but you have to have a, a, a <coughs> encompassing view of what's going on in totality so that you can vote on the components that you think are most important to you. Um, because I think everyone probably has a limited budget in terms of what spending can occur. So there's a lot of big ticket items coming down the road in the next one to five years. And, uh, and it's our job to really inform the public so that as they start coming before you for votes, that you're aware of what the total picture is. So that's a lot of what we discussed um, at the meeting as well and what we have to do to prepare for the special town meeting. So, Any others? Tricia, we'll get back to that other part at about quarter of eight. Yeah, when the folks come in. Yep, okay, thanks. Good. Seeing um, Jim come in, I guess I'll, we'll go, jump back to agenda <coughs> item number six, that's okay. <coughs> This is, a, like I said earlier, discussion with the Situate Coastal Coalition. Uh, Dave, if you don't mind coming up. Jim, if, if you wouldn't mind coming up. I know Jim's, uh, everybody, let me, let me just stop by saying, you know, if I'm repeating myself, I don't care. People in town hall have been putting it, building department, planning department, conservation, town planning. As uh, many of you are well aware, but many aren't, how much time, extra time and effort that these folks have been doing to answer questions, concerns, um, spending a, a, as much time needed with each an individual resident as they come in with their concerns about their family's property, their property, their summer home, whatever, whatever the case is. Um, having said that, we, the, the latest meeting was, um, a hearing that Jim had sponsored a bill today up at the State House. A couple of us were able to go up and attend it. And I'm going to stop short there, Jim, and let you talk about that. And I know your schedule is very busy. You're flying out to Washington tomorrow. 
So having said that, I'll open the floor up to you and, and you know, if start, we might jump in here, there, the town administrator <coughs> might want to jump in and say a few things. But I'll, I'll open that up to you if you, if you don't mind, e either one of you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sean, I just want to start off by saying exactly what you just reinforced, is that the town is doing an exceptional job making first sure first that people are getting educated about the ramifications of both the Bigger Waters Act and the change in these maps. It's a tremendous amount of information. It is impossible to overstate how significant the financial consequences of this act and these new maps can be for us here in situate. Um, and it's not uh, great solace, but, but to know that, that we really are the tip of the sphere. It really is the experience here in situate. The first night when David came and was talking to us was no, that was only a month ago, uh, and it's been a, a tremendous amount that, that, that people watching should know that, that their town leaders have done a phenomenal job every day with people coming in, wanting to look at maps to, to be able to know whether they're affected. It's a professional staff meeting with them. All of us meeting with the, the FEMA representatives just about a month ago to make sure that, that they heard loud and clear from us and that we started to get an understanding of what assumptions they were using. It's important for people to know it really was only a little over three weeks ago that we actually got the maps with the assumptions behind them. Uh, you know, FEMA's had three years to prepare these maps. We were given less than 90 days to respond. It is so, so overwhelming for all of our town officials, all of our town staff, and for all the folks, uh, uh, in, well, my one staff in my office. Uh, things that, that you all have already reported on. We had a meeting with Senator Markey where, where we did a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, Sean, you were there. Marty, you were there. I, I know that we had comments both from Tony and John because we're all speaking daily on this issue. Uh, to make sure that he understood the, the ramifications of the act and the specific request that we put to him to try to freeze this in place to give us enough time for us to be able to properly do what we're saying is peer review uh, people watching should know these this is a federal act and it was it, it, the maps are federally done we don't have a tremendous amount of influence on that um, but we did ask him face to face where, where we said we're learning from the fema folks that they hired an outside consultant um, they had the problems of their own sequestration. They didn't have a lot of money. Um, so the peer review that was supposed to be done of maps, we don't believe has been appropriately done. Uh, so that was one of our requests. Uh, other requests uh, are to grandfather structures here in town where people follow the rules, they put their homes at, at the elevation that was required, or businesses that did the same, and then to find sometimes even a year later that, that the elevation has gone up 50%. is just patently unfair to folks and, and will be very, very harmful to us financially. Um, so at these meetings, you know, Joe, Joe Norton spoke on behalf of, of bankers who were saying that they're concerned this could trigger a, a foreclosure crisis. We had insurance leaders, Andy Wenning. Uh, Wenning Insurance talked about how difficult it is applying this on the insurance end. Uh, I have the, the handouts that was done that were done, that is, by uh, Carol Conway Bowman when she talked about from a, a real estate side how difficult uh, frankly, how it's putting a chilling effect on real estate right now. For people to, watching right now, they should know we did a meeting just today. We had a hearing at the State House. Uh, Sean testified on behalf of the town and Marty as well. Uh, myself, the, the, the thing that's changing and that we should all take some encouragement from is it's gone beyond situate leading this effort. Uh, in Marshfield together, uh, both towns working very, very closely. Uh, today we had uh, the Mass Bankers Association do a letter of support uh, saying that we, we want the state to try to step in to help to the degree a state can. And what we're asking is that the, the Division of Insurance do that peer review that hasn't happened yet. Uh, as you all know, because it was the first meeting we had here, uh, the federal government was supposed to do a financial analysis of what the impact would be of bigger waters before some of these things took place. That hasn't happened. Uh, and, and what we're told, it's because of sequestration, lack of federal funds. So we're asking our state division of insurance to do a, a review of these rates to make sure that they are not excessive, to, to do an investigation, to measure the reasonable reasonableness of these flood insurance rates, and then make suggestions back for action for Congress. I have to stress that, again, it's congressional action that's necessary. Officials here who are busting their, their, their daily work, working so hard, you can't change it, I can't change it, it has to be done at the federal level, but we're doing all that we can. Uh, the final thing, uh, that was today's hearing. Uh, the good news for us is both chairmen, uh, you heard at the end, Sean and Marty, uh, they said 
it would take so long for the legislative process, they're both going to endorse a communication to the governor and the Division of Insurance saying as the leading legislators, as they were, the two chairmen of this Financial Services Committee, they're going to ask that the Division of Insurance step in. So they, they, they were very persuaded by your testimony today. Um, and uh, tomorrow it is a, a hearing with the United States Senate. They have a hearing uh, with the director of FEMA, the director of the National Flood Insurance Program, uh, with several U.S. senators. Uh, I'm going to be going as a state rep. They don't let me speak, but I, I, I will go at least to make sure to, to pass in concerns that we have and ask them to take action to, so that they're hearing from us. That's just how, how this has been the most upsetting thing for our residents, of people uh, worrying about potentially having devastating loss of the values of their homes really worried about being able to stay in their homes and uh, they're hearing from us loud and clear and I'll continue to bring the message that you've been leading all along. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Tricia, do you want everything to add? To what <coughs> Jim said? Yes. Um, if not, no, I um, just I'm sure um, the board would say this, but um, thank you, Jim, for everything that you've done. Um, just really probably been working on nothing on this since um, as you said, we got the detailed information from FEMA <coughs> on the assumptions overlaid on the maps. Um, folks might get contradictory information about when we got the maps and how long we've known, but, um, and this is a very complex process, but the fact of the matter is it's just been probably three weeks since we actually got the, um, the it's called the TSDN notebook from FEMA that actually is the um, basis for which the um, assumptions were overlaid on all the billions of data points that um, went into the maps. Um, all the transects in situate are new. There's 27 transects and um, we've been, uh, the town engaged a consultant three weeks ago to look at the maps and analyze them once we got the assumptions overlay. I received an email um, this morning after this data that has been being analyzed by the consultant since he received it three weeks ago to see the, if there was anything that the town could appeal. And I was informed today that um, the town will be indeed appealing um, some of the assumptions um, that have been overlaid on the maps in some areas um, and will have the voluminous requirements that are required to be submitted in terms of an appeal met. Um, I, I want to underscore the fact that this isn't a panacea for individual residents, that towns may apply for appeals for general, for larger areas, um, so it doesn't take the place of individual <coughs> homeowner obligation or interest into seeing how the maps are appealed. We receive here as part of the process if individuals are appealing, we don't do the appeal for them. We submit it to FEMA on the, their behalf. Um, what the staff has developed is a letter um, to the homeowners saying that um, we will submit their appeal to FEMA. However, we will also indicate to the homeowner if we think that what they have submitted will not meet the requirements for an appeal and not to have false hope. Um, and the only other thing that I will add to piggyback on what Representative Cantwell said is um, we've worked and always have worked, but especially so in this regard, very, very closely with um, the town of Marshfield, both their selectmen and their, their staff. They um, have engaged our consultant to look at their transects. Last night at the selectmen's meeting, they interviewed some more consultants to look at other transects. We are hopeful that we're going to piggyback on that consulting contract so um, in, in, in an effort of information sharing so that we're not spending money twice to look at the same analysis and have us all talking together. The deadline, as you know, is October 17th. Our consultant indicated today that if we had received the map four months ago, we probably could have had even more areas to appeal, but since we're working in this very, very tight time frame and meeting the plethora of requirements that we have to, <coughs> to submit an appeal that we want to have sustained, um, we're focusing on some areas that we believe 
can universally apply to the town. But again, you know, it's not on an individual home basis. It's taking this data and, and, and countering it with some other data points that are defensible and can be used as an analysis as opposed <coughs> to what FEMA's subcontractor has. Thank you very much. <coughs> from the board? Just a quick comment. I mean, I don't, I don't know how much we can comment on the consultant's email <coughs> that he sent, um, but it was very telling. And I think, um, you know, he said that the problem is so vast that he doesn't have the time to, to deal with all the issues. And he's got to focus on the one or two things that he thinks can actually um, implement some sort of impact on this. And he, he said uh, somewhere along the lines that a lot of people have concerns, but that FEMA doesn't have to respond to them. They just, what did he call them, comments, I think. Mm -hmm. That they're just comments, and they're not something that FEMA has to respond to. So this guy sounds like he knows exactly what he's doing, and he knows what areas to look into and what areas not to look into. And like Tricia said, the time constraint is <coughs> enormous. And the amount of work that this guy appears to have to do in such a short period of time is, you know, is almost, you know, a huge challenge amongst itself. So um, I know everybody has concerns here or there, but he knows the ones that you can actually win with. He knows if you have a concern about this or this, it doesn't, FEMA doesn't have to address it. So he's not really wasting his time on those types of issues, but more on, you know, I think he called them shortcuts. You know, there's one or two things that they did that he thinks are most, you know, the most likely to have some sort of impact. So. And I, and I want to add that that response came after all the comments that bubbled up from the joint uh, meeting we had on September 4th with Marshfield. Um, when we, our staff, Laura and Patrick and Bill and Neil spent time with homeowners and we'd have questions as we reviewed, those all went to the consultant. And there was one in particular um, that was raised that we were concerned about in the harbor. And it took them, what do you say, about four hours just to analyze right. that one issue. So, um, so, but that, that that's, you know, as we've heard things come to us from people, um, we've passed that on. And, and the other thing I want to say is the Coastal Coalition has just done a phenomenal job in um, notifying folks, but um, their website is also really, yes. really good. So um, sometimes, you know, our website has so many different things with the town going on, but, um, but the website for the Coastal Coalition is just fabulous in terms of information for folks to go there as well. I just want to add that the... Um they, what they've done is they've come up with a couple of things that they that they look like we can do a, a decent appeal as a town. <clears throat> but I encourage anybody out there who has any issues at all, I would encourage them that basically 30 days from today is is the deadline. So if anybody feels like they've they they want to appeal, I would encourage them to do that on an individual individual basis. So. Uh, Dave, do you have any comments? Yeah, uh, just a couple. Um, I, I also want to thank the uh, the town officials, especially Neil Duggan and Laura Harbottle and Pat Gallivan. I'm not sure who else has been uh, dealing with the public up here in in sh terms of showing people the maps and the issues and what they're <coughs> facing. But I, we know that they have spent an inordinate amount of time on this, and it's uh, it's taken away, I'm sure, from their regular work. And we, we really appreciate that. Uh, we also are getting a lot of calls from individuals and helping them out as best we can. Um, and it's a stressful time for everybody, especially people that are learning for the first time that they're going to be in a flood zone or potentially in a flood zone. Um, there's a lot of financial implications, and obviously it's been said and said and said, but this is, if this all plays out to the worst possible scenario, it's going to be the worst financial crisis this town has ever faced. There's just absolutely no question about that. Hopefully we can get it fixed. And there are two issues that, as I think most people are beginning to understand, it's the new flood mapping and it's also the new uh, Flood Insurance Act, the Bigger Waters Act. So we, we really appreciate everything that everybody's been doing up here. Uh, I am thrilled to hear that the town is going to go ahead with a map appeal. Um, our position has been that even if we couldn't, as a town, do a full-fledged appeal of all the transects, uh, at least try to do something about it. And, I, and I'm really happy to hear that uh, this is looking looking better um, as we move along in that in that regard. Uh, Jim Cantwell has just been phenomenal. Uh, he has been to every coastal coalition meeting that we've asked him to attend. Um, he's he's working incredibly hard at the state level. He's going down to Washington tomorrow to see what he can do about 
uh, getting it moved uh, along a little bit down there. Um, I don't, I, as I said to him earlier today, I don't, I don't know how he does it, but uh, he's, he's working on this for hours and hours and hours every day. Uh, I, I gave the board, as you probably have seen, uh, a list of some of the things that we've found about the mapping, uh, some of the issues that might be raised, uh, not so much in the, in the calculations of the transects, but other issues that we've come across. Uh, so you have that. We're certainly willing to help out in any way we can. Uh, and one, one final thing uh, for people that are watching, do not let your flood insurance insurance policy lapse because if you do you will immediately have to stop paying actuarial rates and they will be in the thousands and thousands of dollars potentially so we've said that the last time we're here we're saying it again Dave is there a benefit if someone thinks they're going to be affected by the, the new map to go out and get yes. insurance yes. now yes that if, 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 the, <coughs> if your if your property is showing up <coughs> In the new map, the maps that that are going to be appealed, if a person, as we understand the process, if a person is going to be in a in a zone that is not presently in a zone, if they get flood policy now, they go into the program as a uh, preferred risk policy, and that would mean that they can buy the policy and and have a premium that's substantially lower than they would be if one, once they are put into the program. So obviously the, the uh, recommendation is that they talk to their insurance agents in the next few weeks or a couple of months. Um, I believe the new mappings are supposed to go into effect next June. So there is, there is time, but people need to be aware of that as well. But again, thank you for all of your efforts up here. Just one, one thing is, um, uh, Dick, thanks for, for referencing and, and commenting on town employees it, it's it's refreshing um, because people work really hard and they don't get the acknowledgement one person I just want to make sure everybody's aware of um, is the town administrator has been working yes, that's very correct. diligent yes. long and hard on this beyond the normal hours working hours so I just one name that I think everybody should also loop into both Neil Laura and uh, Patrick um, who's working tirelessly she's the head of the whole operation and and certainly she's been going to uh, meetings and, and so I anyway, just want to make sure that's aware. Uh, could, could I just bring up one more thing? Speaking of town ministry. I, I emailed Trisha yesterday about the, uh, a rally that's being talked about between Marshfield and Situate. Uh, nationwide, there are going to be rallies held on Saturday, September 28th. Um, we've been kind of throwing around the idea of having a rally in Situate for both towns. The location that we've been talking about is Cold Parkway down by the bandstand. Just to, just to make some more public awareness here. Um, I picked up the events application form this morning, as Trisha suggested. Uh, I guess I'm a little concerned about the fact that the Central Coastal Coalition is a, is a loose conglomeration of all ten beach associations. It's not an entity into itself. Uh, and I guess under normal circumstances, the, the uh, town requires liability policies for an event. I suppose it's more on the order of a, of a large kind of event. We're not anticipating more than maybe two or 300, if, if, if that. But I was just telling uh, Marty O'Toole before the meeting, maybe another way to go about this would be if the Board of Selectmen kind of sponsored that event themselves and were present there, um, maybe that would make the most sense. I don't know if that's a possibility or not, but I'd like, I'd like the board to think about that. Um, I don't anticipate that the rally would last more than an hour. It'd be an, and, and I think, Jim, you said you, you would be available to be there. Uh, so it, I think it's just, it'd be, <coughs> and, and I have in mind that it would, we would do everything possible to make this a very positive uh, rally. Uh, just to be able to get the word out again. So I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not asking for any decision right right here on the spot, but I would like maybe the board to think about that. To have Situate do its own. I, at the meeting we spoke about trying to get Situate and Marshfield. I think it, would be I think it should be both Situate and Marshfield. Yeah. I think maybe Jim would agree with that. Right. I, I agree. And I, um, would they, <laughs> have you spoken to the, the folks in Marshfield? Would they be willing to come over here? Do they want to meet at the bridge or... We yeah. talked, we, at, at our meeting that Jim was at last week, we talked about doing it on the bridge. Uh, we were concerned about 
uh, traffic issues and parking and everything else. There's good parking at Cole Parkway. Uh, it would be, and, and I have been talking to the Marshfield uh, Citizens Coastal Coalition, and they, they also suggested situate. Maybe it would make sense, too, because FEMA was down there, and now it's time to have something yep. up here. Right. So, Dave, okay. what did you say, the 28th? 28th. It's a Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Saturday at noon. At noon. Where's, where's the closest federal building? What's that? I said, where's the closest <laughs> federal building? <laughs> a good place to do a rally. The only thing Not too far away, the Coast Guard Station. Um, They're good guys, though. You know, there'll be some boat activity, maybe people taking boats out, but not typically in Cole Parkway. That happens. Right. It's, it's not usually all that busy, though. Right, right. The, 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 only thing I'm, the only thing I see, I, I, I like the idea, and I know it is a national uh, event, really, um, but I don't know about exposure on Cole Parkway. That's the only thing I would concern, you know, <coughs> as far as being able to do the best we can, because it's going to be, you know, a little, what, two and a half weeks, it's final push to try and get the word out to people who may still be in the dock, which just in the last few days I've talked to people that didn't, still were not aware, so, which... I just don't know if there's a better location, that's all. I, I, in situ, I, I think, sit, well, there may be, but I think Cold Parkway does make some sense because there's good parking there. You've got the Harbor Masters building where you can just have people look over there and, and tell them that the water be three quarters away up to the roof. It's pretty stunning. No, my only point, Dave, is that, you know, people coming through the harbor and things like that, I don't even, I, I'm, I'm not so sure they're going to see that there's anything going on in Cold Parkway. We'll you know? do some media coverage. People would know about it. I don't think you want a thousand people there. You know, two or three hundred would be perfect. Okay. If there are any other comments? Are there any, anything from the, the public How about Neil? Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. Did you have something? Did you have your hand up, Tony? Just no. I, I'd actually like to acknowledge all the administrative staff um, working in the offices. They're really taking the brunt of the uh, doing a wonderful job with the, with the people coming in. Thank you, Neil. All right. Appreciate that. There aren't any other comments from the, the public. I thank you very much for yeah. coming in. I'll certainly keep that in mind. I, I don't see a problem with seeing if we can't streamline um, the insurance policy to, get, to have an event held. Well, we need a lot. Ac we ac need actually, one of the reason I just had Dave fill it out it wasn't for the, the fee or the insurance or anything. Please Dave, you really that. don't have to do because it's not event so much as it's a gathering. But the special events application asks all those questions right. so that we can give it to the police department so they can make adequate judgments about traffic control and whether a detail is needed. So don't worry about okay. all that other. I just want you to fill it out right, so you yeah. have oh, the oh, logistics. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And we could probably come up with a, with a police detail. But I think uh, the more I thought about it, the more I thought it made sense. If, if the Board of Selectmen was actively involved in it, it, it might make it go smoother. I'm sure we can work out yep. the detail. Okay. That's great. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Thank you, Thank Dave. you very Thank much. Thank you, Jim. Jim, yeah. safe travel. Yes, have a good trip. Take Thank care. You. Good luck, Jim. Tricia, can we jump back to eight or not quite <coughs> yet? Yeah, Anne Marie's here. Yep, oh, all right. we're all okay, set. Okay, great. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. The other part of agenda, and I'm not going to start on but the other part of eight is the uh, a drug free communities grant. We'll, when Tony comes back, we'll be discussing. Voting. John, thank you. We just got this part, right? Yes. <laughs> No, that's okay. We'll get him to him. <laughs> yeah, if you give Kim to, she'll make sure he gets it. Anybody else? Um, sure. I'll you can one. give Mara and uh, Ruth in the back. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> hit the press. Hit press. Print? Yeah. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Pension insurance really good, but they still voted. I want to talk to you about what the next Yeah, and Jim, too. Kate Martin. I'm surprised. I think he's getting it. He might come back in, but. Yeah, that's FY3. So whatever they increase from every year. It's any selection from there. No. 
his name, Tony? It's coming to you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Perfect. What number is this? Eight. It's an interesting one. Um, Back to eight again. It's an interesting one. <clears throat> How are you? I'm very good. Thanks very for having good. us. Well, thanks Problem. for coming in. We're pretty excited. So would you like to start out? This was under your report. Do you want to continue? Sure. Um, I had put this as an agenda item for Kim to include when we had just found out that we received the grant. But um, between the, your agenda being posted and us finding out so much more information, I thought, well, it's best that um, before another two weeks go by and we're going to hit the ground running, that the two main movers and shakers relative to the grant actually get to share the glory uh, and, and actually more deservedly are the two people most responsible, I think, for um, this wonderful grant that the town's got an exciting opportunity for our community. So Amory Galvin and Greg Ranieri, I'm happy they came in. And uh, we gave you a little information on the press release, but um, you know, I, I said we met today, and I said the town applies for grants all the time. So typically, the board won't be in the weeds of knowing what everything's about. But so this is a case where we've got the grant, and <laughs> members probably don't know a lot about everything that it encompasses, or that we even applied for it a year ago. <laughs> so this is an opportunity to get you a little more up to speed, since it's for five years, six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. And um, I'll turn it over to Anne Marie and Greg. Thank you so much. It's incredible. Thank you. It's incredible. <clears throat> We're very happy to be here. And some of you may know about this already. We, um, the Situate Facts Coalition is a community-based organization. We started actually in August of 2011. I'll just start. Sure. I can, I'm I so excited. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. I, didn't know. I know. I really I can't <laughs> sleep. Um, so we started um, a little over two years ago with virtually no money. It started at the high school at the, um, the push of South Shore, and the invitation rather, of South Shore Hospital's Youth Health Connection. Um, some members of the police department and Situate Public Schools Administration were, were invited to participate in a kickoff. Would you like to start a, a, a substance abuse prevention group in your community? And people responded. Um, this is around the same time that I was emailing Tony and um, the former um, police chief and school superintendent and all that trying to start something on my own. Um, those two forces sort of join in Greg and I around the same time and things got rolling. We had many people um, from throughout the community take part in a community assessment looking at our problems and our strengths as a community. Um, Selectman Joe Norton was part of that group at that time among many other people in every sector of the community. And we just started getting the ball rolling. We met many times throughout the 2011 and 2012 school year with a wonderful, wonderful response from the community and like I said, virtually no funds. But we still got a lot done and that's first the first page in this handout that we shared with the group. And we don't have to go through all of it today because you'll be here all night. Um, but really, quite a bit happened. A lot of community awareness forums at, at the Pier 44 building, brochures, um, hop in, what do we have, what did we, we did, we helped, um, we brought Chris Heron with the help of the police department. We had several articles in the newspaper, just a lot of awareness building and, and, um, and education. We've had a lot of speakers at the high school and um, really, and we've met and brainstormed and come up with our, our plan to go forward. And throughout this time period of over a year, um, we kept saying we should really apply for one of those DFC grants. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. Um, it's, a dr it's called the Drug Free Community Support <coughs> Grant, which is um, awarded um, and through a very competitive process by the federal government. Um, it's the Office of National Drug Control Policy. That's the acronym, ONDCP. So this award was posted on whitehouse.gov last Monday. Um, we are one of about 40 communities in the state of Massachusetts who are current grantees. Um, and it's, pretty, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and one of, one of the things you have to prove is that your community is really ready to do this, that you have all the sectors of your community represented. It's not the school telling you what to do, or the police, or the board of selectmen. It's everybody in this together. Um, and we were, it was the that was the easy part in the town of Situate because people really showed up and helped and people have been volunteering and it's been pretty amazing. Um, most notably, many participants from Situate High School administration, the past principal, the current principal, 
um, Greg Ranieri, who's the department chair of health and wellness here, um, who already had sort of laid the groundwork through data collection and surveys. We're just, it all just came together at the right time. So we had a nice, nice um, story to tell the federal government. Um, we were able to prove, um, oh, I'm sorry, on page two, you'll see that there are nine new coalitions that were also, stop me whenever, by the way, because I will keep going, interrupt with <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, there were nine <coughs> communities in Massachusetts, um, Situate being one of those, um, that are new grantees. So we're, these nine are beginning a five-year cycle. Um, there's an opportunity to renew for year six through 10. Um, during which phase, you would have, there's a reapplication process, but during that period, you would, um, your funding would wane and you would have to prove that either the, the town would absorb some of the costs or you become a 501c3 organization with other funding sources, you'd prove your worth, frankly. Um, and that is a very hopeful given our infrastructure already. Um, so you'll notice here on the same page that often there are partner, there's a coalition name similar to Situate Facts, a community type name and partnered with um, a legal grantee. And we were very grateful to um, Patricia um, early on to said, yes, we'll basically co-sign for you. Um, that, that Situate will help administer the federal money because we're not a, a, a nonprofit yet. Um, we're just a group of community members. So we're very grateful for that, for that support and the support that we've received all throughout the process. That's, that was one of the prerequisites. We couldn't have, literally could not have done it without that partnership. Um, the application went in last March. We heard last Monday. Um, and as I alluded, some of the grant requirements were a mission statement, which is in your packet, that you have 12 sector representatives confirmed. So that proves that, and it was really neat to, it's um, one of the, the foundations of the, these types of drug-free communities grants, like I mentioned, is that it's a group of people from the, for throughout the community. So you actually have a police representative and a school representative and a parent representative, but you also have a substance abuse professional representative. You also have a clergy from your town represented. And that list and their names and their commitment should be in here. <coughs> I skip that? It's a little something like this. Thank you. Yeah, so that's a little, um, we call it the sector representative chart. Um, that indicates people that literally signed an agreement, um, a pretty binding agreement for the first year, and those can be renewed annually. Um, so you need to have uh, a young person under the age of 18 on your, basically your steering committee, a parent. In our case, we also are grateful to have someone who works at the high school as an adjustment counselor and who's also a parent and has been there since day one. We have the wonderful Adam Conrad from South Coastal Bank. Um, we have a media representative who is also a parent. Um, we have the fabulous and dedicated Amy Heffernan who is a health educator at Situate High School. I could go on, these people have just been so <laughs> wonderful and you can, you can go through it all. Um, Lieutenant Detective um, and now Police Chief Mike Stewart. We're just thrilled about his appointment and his, um, his commitment throughout this whole process. He has such a, a depth and breadth of experience in substance abuse um, that it's, it's, he's been, he's just been wonderful. He's come to all the meetings that we hold at the library and he has just such a perspective and a story to tell and share and expertise, you know. Everyone comes there with a story and a background and it's just, it's awesome. Um, we've had the um, Reverend Barbara Welch, formerly of the First Baptist Church. We have someone from the Y um, as a youth serving organization. We have Dr. Sarah McSweeney Ryan, who is a Situate High School alum. She's a, um, a parent of young children and also a pediatric hospitalist at South Shore Hospital. So she has um, some very real professional and personal experience working with um, babies who are born addicted to opiates. Um, she's, and each of these people has a specific task that they're going to do for us, in addition to bringing our mission back to their sector. So the whole idea of this, this concept of having 12 sectors is that they will come and they will be part of it and they will contribute on a subcommittee and be a regular volunteer, but also that they will bring the mission back to their sector. So they will go back to their colleagues at South Shore Hospital, for example, or they will reach out to pediatricians in situate with their expertise and share what we're doing. So this little thing has just exploded in a really neat way. Um, and it's just, it's just grown up on a volunteer base and it's just, it's just it's really, it's magic, it really is. Um, and then last, almost last but not least, we've had Ed Jacobs from DA um, District Attorney Tim Cruz's office who's helping with grant funding for little supportive grants and also working with um, the Situate Police Department to get us a 24-hour prescription drug drop box in the police station like the town of Weymouth has and many other coalitioned towns have. So we'll continue to have the, the prescription take back days in August, but also anytime you want to get rid of your old meds, um, you can do that anonymously. And lastly, we have Danny Lynch, who's the Situate 
parent um, and also a substance <coughs> abuse counselor. So th these people are awesome. Um, to, on the next page, you'll see a, a very loose um, illustration of our organizational structure, and you'll, you'll notice that many of those key sector representatives also chair subcommittees. When we went through the, am I talking too much? Okay. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> um, when we went through the assessment process in year one, which was a lot of brainstorming, we had um, leadership from the National Director of Pre Prevention from SAD, Julie Nussbaum, led us through that process. And it took many months, and there were many parents from all the schools and many young people from the middle school and the high school, as well as all these kind of professionals I'm referring to. Um, we brainstormed. Um, we looked at data from our town, and we <coughs> came up with these buckets of things that we would like to do. Um, and these, are, these became the, the framework for moving forward. So these are the, the main areas. Lots of times, these people meet independently. Um, at the high school, at Starbucks, at the police station, in someone's living room, and they work on their little projects. Um, so for anyone that's watching this, they need not be um, afraid to attend a big coalition meeting. They're very, they're very much status report kind of in idea sharing, information sharing. If you want to volunteer, these are the people that are working on projects pretty independently, and it's working wonderfully. All of the um, items that become um, goals of ours are all supported by data, and that's really Greg's forte. I don't know if you want to talk about the, the process that we have that many people don't know about yet, about um, collecting um, behavior data. Yep, so there's, there's no doubt about that facts represents the genesis of something truly special within this town. It has the potential to impact long-term cultural behaviors and norms within this amazing community. So that being said, this is a, truly a marathon effort. This is not something that even in five years we hope to, uh, it's, it will never be done. So the moment we rest on the concept of we're done addressing substance abuse and, and prevention within the town is the point where that comes back and rears its ugly head. So the, the coalition itself is, is really committed to the spectrum of substance abuse, what, on one end being prevention and the other end being intervention. So anywhere along the line, we want to convince the youth that we don't even want you to think about starting. And if you are a heavy user, we want to help you. We want to try to provide interventions to support you, to bring you back. Um, so really, the, the vision within our uh, grant application is deep, it's comprehensive, and it's, it's focused, and it's a lot of it that a lot of it is driven by data, pure data, because that's where it's telling us to go. We, we administer the youth risk behavior survey and at the high school level and at the middle school level, and that gives us data. We get to see trends over time. Uh, we get to see change in behaviors. We get to see if interventions or programming that we're in implementing, whether those are effective. Uh, our goal is to continue to use that data to make decisions going forward so that our human resources and capital is spent in a wise manner. Um, really, it's, it's amazing being part of this process because I've seen when you combine the, the amazing community that we have, the, the coalition that's being built, the commitment by everybody involved, and the creativity of the group, there's just really something special happening. So consider yourselves officially invited <laughs> to be part of the coalition because reality is, is to achieve our potential and for this town to, again, to change those cultural norms and long-term behaviors. Um, it's not going to be possible without high, high level support and, um, and so that will happen over time. Um, the group is surely ambitious, we're very resourceful to find funds. This is one of two grants that we applied for and received this just in the past four months. We also applied for a smaller grant through um, Community Health Network Alliance uh, that Situate belongs to which was a $10,000 grant that we got to implement a parent education program for the upper elementary to early high school age parents. To, how, to give them the strategies to, imp to uh, engage in meaningful conversations with their teen about substances and how to um, have the prevention strategies to disengage from potential tricky situations involving substances. So you can see that on our, uh, on our flow chart, you'll see that parent education is a key piece. That is a key piece we're going to be focusing on this year because we feel if we engage parents with the strategies and talk to their kids and we open up lines of communication and this good dialogue that we have the ability to change that perception. There's no longer, it's an unspoken, you know, just start by asking and listening to your children about what do you know about substances in this town? Just sit back and listen. You'll be surprised the amazing things that you hear and how you can help support your children. Um, but again, all of our strategies you'll see in the packet are rooted based on data. We're 
whether it be from Chief Stewart, whether it be students, whether it be uh, large-scale state trends from hospitals, we take a look at that data and we try to use that data to inform every decision that we make. For example, when we hear teens say that there's just not a lot to do on the weekends, thus the genesis of fifth quarter that Ms. Benoit is spearheading. So that's just another subgroup that, it, you know, that really took off and it's just an amazing thing after football games and basketball games. There's things and events and activities for kids to engage in other than leaving it up to their own devices. So there's really um, environmental, meaningful environmental strategies that we are going to implement through this grant that is going to change um, the long-term behaviors and culture of the town we're hopeful of and with your support and the continued support of Ms. Bajazi, the, the, the future is extremely, it's just, there's a real sense of optimism and, and true hope. So hopefully uh, you guys feel that same energy from us. That's and awesome. I don't know where to begin. Um, it's amazing. I, like Trisha, I didn't know all this was going on. I we keep a low recall, profile. Uh, you, you do. <laughs> I do recall Joe being involved yeah. Um, yeah. about two years ago. It's remarkable. I, I'll wait till to go to last. If anyone else has any comments, questions, I, I don't want to. I'll just <coughs> point you to for your late night reading. One of this, um, the last couple pages have more specifics about the plan, about what we're going to do in this year one. Um, it was a pretty um, stringent criteria what you what the money can pay for and what it cannot pay for. Um, <coughs> even though we plan to do all, we try, you, we're supposed to use all a comprehensive strategies. So, you, for example, you cannot pay for speakers. You can't use the money for that. You need to use the money for um, things that are proven to work. So evidence-based education programs. Um, environmental strategies. And they're called environmental strategies. I, I wrote a little bit about that here on the second to last page. Um, and we <coughs> a, and a, if anyone is interested in, in details, eventually it will be on our Situate Facts website, which is under development, situatefacts.org. Um, but it's, it's fascinating. And, the, you know, you think that this stuff is sometimes maybe um, far-fetched to think that you can actually change the data that we're talking about. You can change, for example, the 30 day, the pa have you drank more than five drinks in a row in the past 30 days? This is what we ask our students at the middle school and the high school, and we have that data. And we're going to change those numbers. And the numbers in Massachusetts are high. They're high in, this, in the South Shore area, but we're already working towards them with these specific things that are, have proven to work. And the other drug-free communities that are um, grantees, they've, show, they've seen their numbers go down. So the whole model is funded for a reason, because it does work. Um, so that's what I am so excited about, that Greg already has three years of data, because he's been doing it at the high school and started at the middle mm. school recently. So we were kind of ahead of the game. Many people start that. He was being modest. But many, many communities start that once they get funded. We already had it. So we were certainly an impressive applicant. Um, and that's what these goals on the um, page, the action plan with 12-month goals, these are the simple goals that we have that we want to achieve. Um, with, and there are multiple strategies underneath each one. So that's where some of the parent education things come in. Um, and I listed a bunch of those on the, on the very last page. Um, this is what we're going to do with the money. We're going to share information on youth substance abuse trends. We're going to share that data with the community because it shouldn't be in a file where people can't benefit from it. And we're going to show you it moving in the right direction. Um, we also have already begun, thanks to Patricia again, to share local treatment options. I'm out in the community. Um, as a parent all the time and people say people don't know where to go they don't know where to get help for their kid when there's shame and stigma associated with addiction so we now have that available it's on the town of situate website it's also on the facts website and the, the um, situate public schools guidance employees also have that so we researched we got credible local adolescent specific <coughs> counselors detox centers rehab centers support group learn to support learn to cope support groups for parents for families who are suffering from opiate addiction it's all there now so we're going to get that that information out there we're in a small isolated town and that's not readily it's certainly not something that people are talking about everywhere that's one th i could see i could talk all night um so these are uh, these are the other things that we're going to do with the grant in year one um l launch some narcan and overdose um training to families develop a social norming campaign. Um, you often hear that everybody's drinking. That straight-A student is drinking, that, that scholar athlete, this one, that one. Everybody, you don't, you know, people say, Emory, you don't even know what you're talking about. They're really all doing it. The truth is, they're really not. And we need to get the, the majority of kids are not using. And we need to share that. The, the pro <laughs> of that is, um, and just especially sharing that among youth, it's called social norming. And that's a proven strategy in these other towns that are doing it the right way to say, it's OK. There are many kids who aren't doing that. And you can find them. <laughs> and, and then we give them alter, alternate activities to do. Um, so we're going to work on a campaign to, to share the good news. Um, 
what else? Um, Greg well, talked. I'll interrupt you yeah, for one please, second. Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to extend your I night anymore. I get very well, excited. I, you know, it's. I don't think it's. It's not a surprise to me. I remember talking to you two years yeah. ago. And I don't think anyone here to just see the energy and the passion that you put into this project. And that's the reason this is successful. Well, you know, you, you started it, you pushed it, you didn't say no. Don't shut up. And <laughs> you worked hard, and you. you're the reason why this well, is where it is. That's very kind, Tony. Well, you know it's there's true. A lot of, there's a, there was there's, a lot of well, support. I know you got a lot of people Thank along you. the way, but if you didn't start it and you didn't push it, you know, you got the ball rolling. So congratulations proud, to you. Very proud. Um, awesome. I've been to the events. I've listened to the speakers. I've been at the fifth quarter with Chris McDoint in the back there who runs that. It's it's a great um, event for kids to go to. You've got to give them alternatives um, than going, you know, to the Widow's Walk Golf Course or wherever, right. wherever Sean went. And, um, <laughs> and, and uh, no, but I think it's, it's I think yes. it's a wonderful, wonderful go, program. Right? <coughs> and this is unbelievable numbers here. Believable. I mean, six hundred plus thousand dollars yeah. to, to put into this program. This isn't a, a this little. Is, yeah, this, this represents uh, the premier substance abuse prevention grant in it's the nation. Crazy. It really, it is. You know, so. this is the a grand slam yeah. in the postseason yeah. as far as far as a victory for this town. And all of us have kids, and all of us Care. support you, and all of us want to do what we can to help and. You know, thank you for the effort that all of you have put into awesome. it. Thanks, Tony. Jono? Yeah, I have to tell you, um, when I got the email the other day, I, I, I'm overwhelmed by it and hearing the information. And um, to be f quite candid, I'm proud. Uh, proud for you folks for doing this. You know, we've been hearing an awful lot from the other extreme of all the, the negative stuff, uh, all the problems, and, and trying to figure out how to address it, not in the intervention, not in the prevention, but in more or less the enforcement, and in and, and many in instances, the sad circumstance of having to address it. Um, this really is a phenomenal grant. You've done a grand thing for your town, uh, for, for the kids, and I have to tell you, this is extraordinary. You know, to be able to use this for the next five years, plus hopefully <coughs> ten, and whatever um, uh, you know, the board can do, whatever I can do, certainly to to in continue this. You know, I, I I just look at obviously the programs that I've seen so far. My kids are younger; they're coming up now. Um, the Dare program and how I think that's so important. I mean, I begin to look at even the kids in elementary school, and hopefully in the future, that's something we can hit the first grade that's or second grade to yes. start right out of the gate, Absolutely. so that kids will understand it. And um, I'm, so I just want to let you know. Very proud of what you guys have been doing, and everybody should be. This is the time when this comes before the sport. It's a great opportunity. I don't mind if you speak all night because, <laughs> frankly, everybody in the news should get this and TV should get it. So um, I thank you both, as well as all the other members who have taken the time to invest in their community. Um, this is invaluable for our children, for our kids, and for their future, and hopefully so that they will have a future. So I just want to say thank you very much. It's our privilege yeah, to do it. It really is. I just want to add that it's, it's I mean, it, I just, I haven't known about it for that long, but it's, it's well thought out, it's excellent. I mean, that's really all I can say, and, um, and it's certainly well needed in this town. Yep. So, but really excellent, great job. Awesome. So. Thank you. Awesome. I can't thank you enough. It's unfortunate it didn't happen 20 years ago. I know. You know, um, thank you. Can I ask a question? Please, are you, are yeah. you Are you a teacher? <coughs> no, I'm a parent. Um, so my, I have four young children who are all now at Jenkins Elementary School. <laughs> um, Mrs. Harris is our crossing guard, so she knows all about this. <laughs> so uh, we talk about it all the time and um, share, share resources and things, and things like that because that's how this whole thing works. Um, and no, I have a lot of teachers in the family. My two sisters are Boston Public School teachers. My mom was a teacher. I should be a teacher. But I do this instead. <laughs> the reason I ask is, you know, people come up to us and say, I don't know how you do it. It's, you know, and I'll say, well, there are other people in town that are coaches that, that volunteer this way and that way. And it's this sort of stuff that you guys, you know, awesome. pick up I, the ball. I think the greatest thing, and I don't mean to interrupt, but the thing that's made this really work is the fact that I've been around this topic for a while, and this is really the only formula that w will work for change, is the coalition format with instead of, you know, there would be a point where like, geez, if the schools only did, right. well, if parents only did, well, if law enforcement only did, right. and everybody gets overwhelmed with the totality of the situation and they almost feel helpless, right. there is, really isn't a help, there's a very optimistic and hopeful feel within the group that together, 
those sectors and everybody else is doing their part, whether it be fifth quarter, whether it be grant writing, right. whether it be impact in school, if we all work together and coordinate those efforts. It all adds up. It all yeah. adds up. It awesome. all adds up. So it's really all the sum of the parts coming together. Um, so it's exciting. Thanks, yeah, but before I let you go, uh, Mara Curran has something to share. I just have one question. Thank you, Ryan. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. My name is Mara Curran, First Parish Road and Sit Your Own Parent, um, former school committee member, and on the advisory board now. So I actually had an email pinned to you, Greg, this afternoon when I saw the announcement because it's so fabulous. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And I need to look into your um, information, but I do have one question. The fifth quarter is one of the first great steps that have been taken to give kids a place to go to. Yeah. Does that funding cover any type of initiative like that for like a permanent I wish it did. Community place for the kids. We've talked about that a lot. Like one, that's one of the things that I'm really interested in personally and I think it's a long term. It's probably a year 13 type of goal. Okay. Hopefully not, but a, a, a regular place like a teen center type place. That's a that would be a wonderful thing. Steve Spenson who's a, um, on the rec commission and my next door neighbor, hello Steve, um, <laughs> is on our steering committee and we, we talk, you know, that would be a nice partnership with the rec department and future community building space. Um, I would love to see that. It's not on the, that doesn't fall within the, the funded piece. Okay. In fact, the fifth quarter events don't fall within the funded piece either. Right. So it's sort of like entertainment <laughs> value. Um, so all of the, and it's kudos to parent Christina Benoit who is here, who late last, or late last January said, let's just do this. And Tony volunteered, a lot of uh, parents from the community volunteered. Um, it's an idea, um, just to spend a very short amount of time on that topic, because it's, it's, it's powerful. And I think it's been very successful so far, and I think it will grow into, I hope, a teen center of sorts someday, with maybe the rec department or whoever wants to do it. I think it would be awesome um, to have drop-in things, schedule things, a place for kids to go that aren't on a traveling sports team <coughs> or whatever. Um, there's, um, but we have a Y people, rec people, and we have a friend at the Boys and Girls Club in Boston, actually. Um, so, the fifth quarter was started in Pennsylvania some years ago after there was a, a student died in a drunk driving accident after a home football game. Um, post party, house party or something, and the, the young man died. And their sad club there started this thing, like, let's do something, let's give the kids a place to go because everyone was going to the games in that town. Um, and then they sort of coined that phrase and the town of Needham in Massachusetts has a similar coalition to ours and they have been doing it for a couple years with great success. They get a couple hundred kids to attend their events and I think we'll get that here. Um, so um, Chris Benoit pilot piloted it last year. We had, um, we scrambled for donations and we're now still accepting donations. We had many, she did a letter campaign just about a month ago and we had our first one on Friday. What was the day, the first date? September 6th. September 6th, which was the first week of school <coughs> and the first home football game. So only on evenings, weekend evening, so if there's a Friday or Saturday game, we're planning them after all of the home football, basketball, and eventually other events. So the next ones are October 11th and October 18th. They're in the gym. Principal Wargo is totally behind it. We had a um, student DJ, DJ the first one. We were able to pay him a little bit. We were able to provide Maria's pizza and waters. We had foosball. We were actually looking for a ping pong table donation. We had a foosball table donated, a can jam donated. It's awesome. We did that one in the small gym. It's really cool. We shut the lights off and make it look cool. And it's supervised by Corey of volunteers from the community. Hopefully not the parents of the kids who are there that night because that is a deterrent. Um, but we want it to be cool and we're, we're um, now polling students at the high school for their ideas. Um, situate residents who don't attend Situate High School are also welcome at the events, which is wonderful. So if you go to the charter school or BC High or the Vogue, you can come too. It's for you to, to hang out with your friends. Middle school is not welcome at that yet because they have a lot of um, evening events at the middle school. And we're really seeing that we need to target after eighth grade from our data. Um, so um, we've had many, and you can maybe chime in, Chris, we've had a lot of donations from O'Donohue Insurance. Um, Citrate Federal. Citrate Federal Savings Bank was the first. Thank you. <coughs> Anderson Fuel, um, <laughs> Symphony, <laughs> Sym <laughs> Sym Symphony Learning, <laughs> Tedeschi's, <laughs> Symphony Learning, Tedeschi's, a few individual, a few individual oh, families. Yeah. It's been great. So, so that is not funded, but we still we need to pay for pizza and entertainment for these events. I got a check from a parent of an elementary school kid for fifty dollars the other day. They're they're continuing to roll in, and I'm sure we'll be knocking on some booster club doors in the near future so we can keep doing it. But it's been really good. We had over 150 kids the first one. We're doing it again October 11th and 18th. And we're just hopefully hoping to keep at them. So that's hopefully the seed for a future 
Heavy duty. Well, can you guys yeah. make sure you come back every so often and tell Absolutely. us what, part of the, plan. what the update yeah. is? No, I will. Yeah. Great. <laughs> John, just had <laughs> one, just one quick yeah. question, I'm, and I don't want to give a send us off on a tangent. No. I don't want to create any <laughs> false try. hopes. But you know, you mentioned a, 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 a teen center or something. Yep. Spatially, what would you be ideal? What would be ideal spatially for for a facility outside of the gymnasium? Right. So I Eyes actually wide. have a, um, a little bit of research on that that I can be happy to share with the board. Um, they're successful when there is a dedicated paid employee that runs them. So someone like a Jen Vitelli type person with youth programming or youth development experience, kind of like a boys and girls club type person running them. So it can't be volunteer staffed. Many towns have tried and failed with teen centers in the past because it's it's not open when the kids go or the thing was canceled kind of thing. So it really has to be a true, with a, a business plan and investment. Um, the city of Brookline is opening one right now, and it was a, that was a multi-million dollar deal. To, I mean, that's possibly over the top, but it, they had the need, and they did a lot of fundraising. It was actually the um, Epstein, Theo Epstein's twin brother and his wife who did all the, the planning for it. So um, I think the building spaces can be flexible, but it has to be dedicated. So, um, or the time has to be dedicated. I actually uh, met with uh, Florence Choate at one point and we talked about um, possibly sharing space with a senior center and that would work during the school year but not in the summers mm -hmm. kind of thing so it can't be oh it's senior hour oh no it's teen hour kind of thing um, so but it would be something that had um, scheduled programming and drop-in stuff so certainly after school hours and weekend day and evening hours are the ones that are those are kind of it's more like the, the time and the staffing that's the big prerequisite and the space so it could have a couch and a xbox tournaments a kitchen is very popular so you can do cooking classes or the the flag football league goes there and they make pizza on fridays after their little tournament on the field so outdoor space would be key um, it doesn't have to be fancy um, some some communities are building big civic centers with with pools and the whole shebang. Um, it doesn't have to be that extravagant, but it has to be staffed. If you're interested in joining the youth programming yes. subcommittee, mm -hmm. by all <laughs> I very well may. I Let know. Me it's, I think it'll happen. I, you know. <coughs> and that's just, it's not like someone will find a passion within this grant that, they, that they, yeah. they find and they move towards. Right. You know, the reality is the totality of this is, is vast. Right. But if everybody takes their piece and is committed to it, it really is. We're seeing some amazing right. things happen. Yep. Um, just in conclusion, I just want to express publicly my sincere appreciation Stop. from Ms. Anne Marie Gallagher. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, you have been, it's been a pleasure to work with, and uh, it's been an awesome pleasure. It worked. Thanks. Thank you. We Thanks, thank those parents more than the selectmen. That's for sure. That's the thing. Thank you. Yep. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thank Come you. back. We'll be back. Absolutely. Thank Two you weeks. <laughs> and I should say, if we're still on, um, then that we have a quarterly open meetings where everyone's invited to come. You don't have to sign anything when you walk in the door. We currently hold them at the town library in the downstairs meeting room, and that meeting will be on Monday, October 21st, from 6:30 to 8 in the evening. So anyone's welcome to drop in and see what's going on. Great, thanks. thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yay. Thank you again. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item number nine. Uh, there's other business. Uh, Marty? Yep. Or correspondence, if you either either one. Do you have other business or correspondence? It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Um, well, I was going to read a letter okay. uh, from the Town of Marshfield Police Department. Uh, dear Town Administrator Vincasey, I wanted to write you to express my sincere appreciation to Situate Harbor Master Mark Patterson and First Assistant Michael Bierce. On October 5th, 2013, <clears throat> they organized a regional maritime training that took place in your town. The training involved the towns of Marshfield, Situate, Hull, Braintree, and the city of Quincy, and the United States Coast Guard. Each of the above communities in the Coast Guard participated in marine law enforcement training. The training was a great success and helped to not only standardize local response to maritime situations, but also continue to build on relationships with these groups. This type of training is invaluable, in my opinion, as we rely on our neighbors in the Coast Guard in times of need. This standardized training ensures that in a time of emergency, all of our responders will be able to operate on the same page. The Situate Harbor Master staff played an integral part in organizing training and showed great initiative in recognizing the importance of these events. As a border neighbor of Situate, I appreciate this type of professionalism as almost daily our respective Harbor Master departments work together. It makes my job a little easier when I know that in a time of need, the towns will provide us with mutual aid and possess the skills necessary to get the job done. 
<coughs> excuse me, this past Monday, Marshfield and Situate Harbor Master Departments responded to a boat fire in the North River. Our two departments work flawlessly on the various techniques they just trained on. Training is the key to success, and Harbor Master Patterson and First Assistant Beers clearly recognize this important fact. I do not want their efforts to go unnoticed. I look forward to our continued partnership. Sincerely, Philip Tavares, Chief of Police and Captain of the Port. Thank you, Marty. If you, there's one other piece. Yep. If you, on a, while you're yep. On a get a letter. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it's from John McCarthy, uh, dated to, uh, to uh, Dear Al Bangert. I would like to take this opportunity to commend the Situate Department of Public Works and, more specifically, the individuals involved in preparing the school grounds for the start of the school year. They went above and beyond the call of duty to provide an attractive exterior environment as our students, staff, and parents arrive for the start of the new school year. Veteran principals commented to me that this is the best grounds have looked in years. The condition of the grounds is the first impression that the public sees as they arrive on our campuses. A positive first impression goes a long way in creating an overall positive educational experience and instills a sense of pride in everyone. <clears throat> I cannot thank them enough. Please pass on to the following individuals and anyone else I may have missed my sincere appreciation for a job well done. Fran Lydon, Mike Soper, Kevin Stanley, Mike Breen, Brian Collins, Andrew Stevens, and Devin Flynn. Sincerely, John McCarthy, su Superintendent of Schools. Nice letter to get. Right. Very nice. Call. And I, that's, that's not the first time I heard that. Someone else uh, in conversation that said that all the schools look uh, for the opening day of school. Um, going on to other business, I'll start with John. Sure. I just wanted to um, communicate to the board that um, last week on Thursday, September 12th, I went to the Plymouth County Advisory Board meeting. It's a, basically county commissioners run the county, a budget of about $10 million. The advisory board is actually run, it's like a legislative, if you will, um, board run by um, a few of the um, town selectmen, and then the actual voters happen to be a selectman from each town. There are 27 of them. Um, and I just to quickly kind of get you on, it's just that uh, one of the things that kind of, um, you know, county commissioners had indicated that they've submitted some legislation that they believe is going to help the county. The time's going to find out whether or not it does or not. Um, I'll certainly report more about the county and how it's being handled with respect to their budget. Uh, they made a transfer of $230,000 um, for fiscal budget 2013. <clears throat> what that means is just recently, in order to cover the costs and expenses for last year's budget that started last July and ended in this June, uh, they had a deficit of $230,000. And what they did was they offset it by other revenue that they said they had um, over budgeted, in other words, they had access. To be honest with you, they haven't audited their books in over seven years since 2007, um, actually six years. So I don't know how <laughs> they get their figures. It's almost like a P game or a shell game because they're moving things around from one to the other. Um, I will say that um, I'll, I'll continue to report back on it when I go to these meetings. It's there's a lot to be um, asked about, and um, um, but one thing I wanted to touch on was an issue that was in the Boston Globe this past <coughs> Sunday, and if I can at least report from the information I received this morning, or this afternoon rather, is that the um, Plymouth County Pension Retirement Board, now these are two separate entities altogether. There's the county run by the commissioners, and then there's a retirement board. Um, as, as accurately reported by the um, Globe reporter, that Situate was going to be facing an increase of 23% on top of what we're paying annually. Right now we're paying about $3.5 million each year. And so they were going to increase it unilaterally um, to the tune of about $900,000. And if you begin to do that number and say they're going to take that away without any input from the towns, such as Situate, uh, that would be what we call a budget buster for our own budget uh, because we're using a lot of those monies for running our own budget here in town, both school and town side. Um, I guess you could say it's kind of a mixed bag, the decision. The decision was to push out for a period of four years uh, from 2030, which is where we're supposed to pay for this unfunded li uh, liability, uh, to four more years later, which is a good thing. Instead of having to pay the 23 percent or 900,000, They've decided that you know they're going to reduce it to 400,000, which is about um, I think it's about um, 10, 10 and a half percent. 
Now, the problem with that is, is that they've also are tacking on another 8% on top of that, not this year in this budget that we're dealing with, but the next budget year, fiscal year, which would be um, 2015. 16. 2016, excuse me. So <coughs> what I guess I'm trying to tell everybody here is that this is a major issue. And while we are increasing our pay this year from 3.5 to 3.9, uh, that number is going to go up in less than two years. And that's going to have a profound effect on us budgeting and obviously on and what we're trying to do for the benefit of the town long term with our strategic plan and planning of different things. So um, I'll report back on it. But I will say one thing that I was dismayed at is that while there are five members on this Plymouth County Retirement Board, one member phoned in. <coughs> and one member apparently didn't have the time to listen to um, the town managers and treasurers who had gone to the meeting because he wanted to vote it. And I have to say that our town administrator was there, and she was there representing our town and trying to explain the situation. And um, it's, you know, again, I wasn't there, but it seems to me that maybe there was a rush to judgment, and, and, and certainly a decision had already been made by the board members to vote what they were going to do without listening to the 13 um, town administrators who had signed a letter and treasurers from the communities to say, listen to us, and, and this is what we're expecting. So. Um, I'll report back more, and I have to tell you, um, it certainly begs a lot of question that we as a town need to take a little closer look at this, hopefully along with other towns, and see if there are other available avenues uh, to address these pension um, issues that, frankly, are our obligation that we have to do, but to see if there's a better way of handling it for the future for the benefit of our town. So um, I know it's a little long, more long-winded, and I guess I'm, I'm up on my soapbox here, but I just think that people in town should be aware of that there's a larger scope here in the county, and there's certainly a lot of questions that should be asked. So other than that, that's all I have, gentlemen. Is it, can you, we're going to have to have layoffs if something like that, if this happens? Can we maintain the staff we have, Tricia? Uh, you know, Sean, it's really premature. All right, too early when we get, I mean, this is just one <coughs> budget um, line item that, you know, we're looking at for a budget that takes place, you know, nine months from now. Right. So um, I'm meeting with more Thursday. Are we meeting? Tomorrow? Sorry. Um, and the financial <coughs> forecast, the, the financial team will probably get together to look at the forecasting sooner than we typically do. Um, and then Tony will probably have a forecasting meeting sooner than we typically do. Just because, like I said, this is one item of multiple budget items, and we already know it's, you know, eight and a half percent over our levy limit right now, or do the math, right? Eight percent. Right. So. Okay. Sorry is about that, any, any that's the information. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's no good news. No, it's just know, negative. Just um, Tony. Yeah, I mean that was on my list as well, John, and I can't reiterate how important that is. Um, that's one of the things that we discussed at our, our retreat the other day, that this is an upcoming potential expense that comes to the town. Our taxes go up, I mean, our levy limit goes up about a million, maybe 1.1-ish every year with the two, two proposition two and a half increase. And 500 plus thousand of it just got spent on this, this one line item. And that $1.2 million is supposed to be used to pay pay increases, uh, you know, contract negotiations, increases in terms of different contracts that we have, um, let alone <coughs> expanding our services and working on projects that we're working on. So this is a huge, huge hit to our community. And like John said, I was very dismayed when I talked to Tricia today and she told me um, the feedback that she got uh, from the group. That it, there, was no, there was no give and take on it. It was just a done deal. So, um, you know, it's definitely something that we have to look into. Um, on a brighter note, um, John, I'm glad you're in the back there. I wanted to thank John and the cable department. Um, last week, many of you may have noticed that um, they are now showing the high school football games on <coughs> cable television um, two or three times a week right after the um, football game. So I think as a, the last email I got, the games are usually on Friday night and they'll be replayed on Tuesday night as well as maybe one or two other times during the week. 
and it was a great, you know, I was expecting something to be all choppy and not really flow well, and it was really a great broadcast. It was like you were, like you were at the game watching it. So, um, John, thank you for all the efforts of doing that. We've talked about it for a long time. Thank Rich Long, um, the rest of the people on the cable committee, and Herb Devine for, for the efforts of getting that there. This extra content on our cable <coughs> televisions, instead of constantly watching these scenes of Situate, um, I think are great. So, um, good job on that. What about the game itself? Well, why don't I go into that, Sean? All right. <laughs> we can go into the sports report. Um, Situate, high school football team, won last week, beat the uh, the reigning Super Bowl champion, Sharon. Um, their record's one and one, and they play again, I think, this Friday night as well. So they're off to a great start. The soccer team, both boys and girls are off to a great start. And the uh, golf team is off to a great start as well. And they won tonight, <coughs> they beat Middleborough, and uh, they are four and one to start the season. And field hockey as well, I think, is off to a great start. So I can only go to so many of the games, so if we could kind of <laughs> split it up, it'd be great. Um, one other quick thing that I want to mention, you know, we had the people that were involved um, in the facts thing in here today, and I just wanted, uh, Friday night, what was it? Friday night, I think yep. it was, I went to um, the Stevermans have a golf tournament, and I think they've raised, this was like the 10th or 11th or 12th year that they've had this, um, this uh, fundraising event, and they've raised over a half a million dollars, and um, another great outing. They played golf in the rain. It was, you know, hundreds of people there. Jennifer Vitale's involved in it, and um, you know, just another great group of people that are doing things that put back into the town. And they gave out their award, um, the Rec, uh, Mr. C's award, out to uh, Betsy Calnan, who um, has done great things for the town and currently runs our um, town's uh, Special Olympics and does a lot of work with, um, with those athletes. And she won the Mr. C's award this year. And I had the pleasure of, uh, I, I work, my daughter and I work with her on the Special Olympics. I had the pleasure of giving her that award. So it was just another great event. Um, so thank you to the Stevermans and thank you for Betsy for doing all that you do. That's it. That's all. Psycho yeah. football fundraiser. I could do that, but I, was, I felt I was crossing the line. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go into that a little bit. Um, that, that was quite a, um, fundraiser they had for psycho football. They, uh, that a couple of the Patriots were there, um, which is oh Vince Wilfork. Yeah, Vince Wilfork. I, I knew that, but Wiggins. Jermaine Wiggins. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, but it was it was quite a time, um, and that was on Friday night. John was there, and as well as Tony. Marty left, so we didn't have a quorum. Well, I had I had to get. I had to, well, yeah, we couldn't have three of us there. So um, anyway, so I'm just going to give a quick update on what's been happening at the old Pier 44, the Situate Harbor Community Building. Um, a lot of people have been asking. Um, at this point, the fire alarm has been replaced. They're, they're, they've gotten some pricing on carpeting and things like that. They're getting close on the end of that. Uh, plumbing is basically um, they're, they're pressure testing all the pipes to make sure everything's good. And they're going to be getting the restrooms up and running. Um, and they're working on windows and things like that. And the other and the roof is, go, is supposed to begin on October 1st. And just so everybody understands, this any of this money does not is, is basically comes out of the mitigation funds from the T. So um, as these repairs are done, we want to get Pier 44, Situate Harbor Community Building, uh, open as soon as we can. So, and that's being worked on by Kevin Kelly. That's about all I have. Okay. The final thing was while we're on the fundraisers, the uh, Reedy tournament was again Saturday night. That was another one that um, I attended part of it, the golf part of it. That that was enough. I did so bad out in the golf course. <laughs> I didn't get invited to go to the, the activities afterwards. <laughs> but anyway, I did, um, there was one serious thing that I wanted to recognize, some volunteers. And if you guys haven't been by there, bring your kids down the Maritime Museum on, on Driftway there across the transfer station. Next time you guys are going by, stop in when it's open. Um, I just, this past summer, there's been, I, I guess, well over 500 people that have gone through there. And a very good friend of mine, said who goes to these museums said this is could hold its own for any other museum like it and uh, like i say if you have a chance stop by there and i'd just like to recognize some of these individuals that would go there open up the, the, open up clean up whatever the case was make it available to these people that use it and the following individuals is, is uh, sandra frankman uh, carol apgar mary Le larry bruce bent Dick Vines and Diane Prouty, Dave Ball, which I, I would have brought this up earlier when Dave was here, but he, I didn't think of it, and Jane Adderton. 
Um, once again, I, it's been a while since I've been there, but I do recall when I went there, it was, it was pretty neat. So a lot of times these things go unnoticed. You go by, the, every one of us goes by there, you know, many times during the week, and you just don't think to stop it. Next time you go on by, please do. Uh, thank you, those people. Finally, if that's it for other business, how about minutes? Um, Would the board selectmen vote to accept the regular session minutes for April 2nd? And a second. second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Or not um, present? Marty? Uh, not present. Yeah. Move the board selectmen vote to accept the regular session minutes for September 3rd and 7th. Okay. Second. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Finally, is a motion to adjourn? Second. And sign some documents. Move to adjourn and sign documents. And a second. Second. Second by mind. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, folks. <clears throat>